So let's start this lesson on atomic mass units just by looking at a few common masses that um, you're going to run into a lot. Um, so what we've got here is the masses of the things that an atom is made of, a proton, a neutron, and an electron. The first thing just to notice is how incredibly small this is, right? Like times 10 to the negative 27. That's very, um, very small. Um, that's, it's kind of unfathomably small. The next thing to notice is how similar those are, right? Like, look at the, um, the proton and the neutron. Those numbers are almost exactly the same. They're both times 10 to the negative 27. They only differ in that, um, that fourth digit there. Um, so these are very, very similar. Protons and neutrons are almost exactly the same size, which is kind of cool. But then you look at the electron, and that's much smaller, right? Like, that's super tiny. 10 to the negative 31. That's a lot smaller. Just to give you a sense of how much smaller that electron is than the proton, let's scale things up by a lot to make them much bigger than they really are. And let's imagine that an electron is like roughly the size of, of maybe a hedgehog here. Um, here's my little hedgehog friend. Let's see. Um, so this is your, your hedgehog electron. If an electron was the size of a hedgehog, um, then a proton or a neutron would be roughly 2,000 times bigger than that hedgehog. So an animal that's about 2,000 times the size of a hedgehog, well, that would be like an elephant. So here's our proton or neutron elephant. Here we go. Um, so if you want to picture the, um, the atom scaled up a lot, imagine sort of a herd of elephants is the nucleus, a whole bunch of protons and neutrons that are elephant-sized, and then whizzing around them, way out far around them, um, are these uh, little hedgehog electrons flying around. So that's the kind of scale difference that we're talking about between electrons and, and neutrons and protons. Um, so there you got a few masses and, and what they look like. Now, the problem with those numbers is those are awfully small, right? And it's incredibly awkward to write them, even in scientific notation. It's better than writing out all the 0, 0.000 forever, but it's still awkward. So what we need is a better unit that just has more normal sounding numbers and easier to work with numbers, reduces mistakes, and it's just a lot easier to write down. So that's what we use, and we use something called atomic mass units. Um, an atomic mass unit comes from defining the mass of carbon-12, to be exactly 12 atomic mass units. The symbol for that is the U. Um, so if you think about what that means, well, carbon-12 is made of six protons, six neutrons in the nucleus, and then six electrons. The electrons are so small, they don't even count towards the total mass, basically. Like, they're, they're just, they're tiny little hedgehogs compared to a herd of elephants, right? They're so tiny. Um, so kind of think of most of the mass of carbon-12 being those protons and neutrons. There's six of each of them, or 12 nucleons altogether there. Um, so that means that if 12 atomic mass units is equal to the mass of carbon-12, then one atomic mass unit must be pretty close to the mass of one proton or one uh, neutron. Not exactly, but, but it's in that ballpark. So that's where the atomic mass unit actually came from. And here's the conversion factor. So one atomic mass unit will equal 1.66 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. So that's the conversion factor we're going to be using. Um, now let's try actually doing some math with it. I'm going to show you, um, uh, maybe it seems like an overkill process of unit conversions. It is overkill, to be honest, for this context. I'm going to show it to you, though, because it's super powerful and it will be useful for every unit conversion you ever have to do anywhere. Um, so in physics, for example, you might end up having to convert between, say, meters per second squared, and you need to convert that to, like, um, I don't know, miles um, per hour squared. That's a really difficult unit conversion to just sort of memorize a whole bunch of conversion factors for because there's a meter to be converted there and then a second to be converted as well, but it's also a second squared, so there's kind of two things there. Um, there's a one process of unit conversions that will work for every single unit conversion you ever do in your life, including more complicated ones like this. And that's the process I'm gonna show you for this problem. So even though it looks like overkill for this problem, super helpful for any other sciences that you take. So I recommend going all in on this unit conversion process. How we do it is we write down the mass we're given. So in this case, I'm given a hydrogen atom has a mass of 1.68 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. 
and I'm asked to convert that to atomic mass units or I find its atomic mass. Um, so how you do this process is you always multiply by a fraction and in these more complicated units like if you had meters per second squared you'd be multiplying actually by multiple fractions. Um, I'm going to erase this just so you don't get confused. We're not actually doing that crazy unit conversion here. We're just doing normal ones. Um, but we always multiply by fractions. And how your fraction works is you want to take the unit you want to cancel, like this kilograms. I want to get rid of kilograms. And you put it on the opposite side of where it is. So right now it's on top. I'm going to put it on the bottom. And that will help us by canceling the kilograms. That's what we want to do. And then I put the unit that I want to get to, which is atomic mass units, I put that on top of my fraction. Now the deal with multiplying by fractions is that the fraction you multiply can only ever equal one, right? I can't just take my number and multiply by seven out of the blue because I like the number seven, that's not legit, right? I can only multiply by one because then that's not gonna actually change my number. Um, but how can I make this fraction equal one? Well, I can make a fraction equal one if the top and the bottom are equal to each other, right? Like seven over seven equals one because seven equals seven, but that's a useless fraction to multiply by. So let's multiply by a useful one. We know that one atomic mass unit equals 1.66 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. So because one atomic mass unit equals that denominator, the 1.66 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms, I'm just multiplying by the number one. This fraction isn't changing my number by any amount, but I am changing the unit because now the kilograms are gonna cancel. Kaboom, kaboom, I've got kilograms on the bottom and kilograms on the top, and I'm left with the unit that I want, which is atomic mass units, so that's a good thing. Type that into your calculator, um, and you're gonna get a mass of 1.01 .01 atomic mass units. Just a pro tip um, on using your calculator. Um, When you're typing this in, I really recommend using your scientific notation button. Um, so on my calculator, um, it looks like this. It says EXP. Um, on your calculator, it might be EE. I've also seen it, especially on the more newfangled calculators, times 10 to the, and then sometimes there's like an X up here or a, or a blank up there. Um, all of those things mean the same thing. They mean times 10 to the power of. And it does two things. First, it saves you time. So when you're typing in, say, this number on the bottom here, you would type it in like this, 1.66. And then instead of actually typing out times 10 to the, just hit that button, that EXP button or the times 10 to the button or the EE button, and then go straight to the exponent, dive right into the negative 27. So you can skip the whole times 10 to the part. It's faster, but more importantly, it actually achieves the purpose of putting that whole number in brackets without actually writing the brackets down, but it treats the number as if it's in brackets. That's super important because you want this number in brackets, right? You want to make sure you're dividing on the bottom here by not just the 1.66, but also by that 10 to the negative 27 too. You want to divide by that entire denominator. You want the denominator in brackets. So using your scientific notation button, your EXP button, um, will make sure that that whole denominator stays in brackets. So super recommend you do that. Try it out right now. Um, make sure you can use that button on your calculator and ask for help if you are stuck. All right, let's go the other way now. So um, if we have the mass of something in atomic mass units, like titanium is 47.87 atomic mass units. And notice that's actually on the periodic table. So all of your atomic mass units, the average atomic mass is given on the periodic table. And we're gonna talk about that more in the next lesson too. So that's the average atomic mass for titanium. It doesn't show units on the periodic table, but that would be atomic mass units, the little u there. So let's say we want to convert that to kilograms. We're going to multiply by a fraction. That's always a process we do here um, to do a unit conversion. Um, so we want to get rid of the atomic mass units. That means atomic mass units need to be on the bottom of my fraction. The unit I want is kilograms. So I'm going to put that on the top of my fraction. And then I have to make sure my fraction equals one. So I need to use that conversion factor that I've got right here. One atomic mass unit is equal to 1.66 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. So then I just type that into my calculator, 47.87 times 1.66 times 10 to the negative 27 divided by one. You don't have to do the divided by one. It doesn't make a difference, but you could. Um, and the number that I get, the mass of a titanium atom is 7.946 times 10 to the negative 26 
kilograms. Um, and that's my solution there. All right, so that's the process of doing those unit conversions. Um, let's look at just one extension on this here, um, which I think is pretty interesting, and I hope you do too. Um, so let's look at that carbon-12. Remember we said that the atomic mass unit comes from this definition that 12 atomic mass units is equal to the mass of one carbon-12 atom. So let's actually like figure out, well, what should the mass of a carbon-12 atom be? Well, there's only a few different things in a carbon-12 atom, right? There's six protons in the nucleus, there's six neutrons in the nucleus, and then there's six little, those tiny little electrons that we kind of ignored earlier, right? But they're there, so we'll count everything in here and figure out the expected mass of a carbon-12 atom. So if you combined all those masses together, you'd have six protons. We'll do six times the mass of a proton. And the mass of a proton, if you look back at that chart, is 1.673 times 10 to the negative 27, and that's in units of kilograms here that we're working. Um, then we'll add into that the mass of a neutron, so that's 1.675 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. And we'll add those six little electrons. The mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31. That's a three. 31 kilograms. So put that into your calculator, use that EXP button to speed it up for you, um, and you get a mass of 2.01 times 10 to the negative 26 kilograms. All right, so that seems fine. The actual mass of carbon-12 is exactly um, 12 atomic mass units. It's defined, that's how we define the atomic mass unit, right? So that's precisely the mass. So let's try and convert this mass um, into kilograms and just compare it. So the actual mass, we could call it mass actual, is 12 atomic mass units. To do that conversion, remember we multiply by a fraction, and the fraction will put the atomic mass units on the bottom kilograms, which is where we want to go, on top, just so that we can compare it to this number here. That's why we want kilograms. And my conversion factor, 1.66 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms equals one atomic mass unit. Um, so that cancels my atomic mass units. Those are gone, and I'm left with the unit I want of kilograms. Toss that into my calculator, and I get 1.99 times 10 to the negative 26 kilograms. Which should be super weird, right? Because here we combine all the elements, all the pieces within a carbon atom, the protons, the neutrons, the electrons, and we get a mass that should add up to 2.01 times 10 to the negative 26 kilograms. But when we actually take a carbon-12 atom and we weigh it, we find out it has less mass than that. It only has a mass of 1.99 times 10 to the negative 26 kilograms. And that seems like, oh, it's not very different, but it's just super weird on a fundamental level. Like, what's going on here? It's as if you had two people, and individually, this person weighs 50 pounds, and individually, this person over here weighs 50 pounds. That's fine. So if, if they held hands, you would think that they should weigh how much? Right? A, 100 pounds. But no, they weigh 98 pounds. You're like, what? Like, that makes no sense at all. That seems crazy. What's actually happening here is that mass is being converted into energy, pure energy. Um, in most of our life, mass is conserved. In all of the experiments we're going to do in our class this semester, mass is conserved. Um, so that's kind of a truism that we kind of take for granted. But in the universe in general, mass is actually conserved with energy, and they can switch between each other. Mass could actually turn into pure energy. And the way it, it does that is with that formula e equals mc squared. Um, but this mass is going right into a binding energy that actually holds that carbon-12 atom together. So it's like when those two people um, held hands, the energy that bound them together was two pounds that just vanished and turned into that binding energy that connected them. And that's what's happening with carbon-12. So just a kind of cool physics aside that I thought you might be interested in. Um, and that's it for this video.